Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? It's Porky here. You know, don't you? You know, the voice of hardcore boxing. Because that's why you've tuned in. Right. Today, I'm joined by Matt from Essex. And how are you doing, Matt? Are you all right? Very well, Russ. Very well. Good. What are you on, what, what are you on with? What's the latest in Essex? No, not a lot. No, not really, nothing really going on. Winter everywhere is sharp. So there's not much uh, really to go on, really. Just uh, get forward to football and uh, I suppose whatever they're serving up in the boxing, which we'll get on to in a little while. So Yeah. yeah. Apart right. from that, just, uh, yeah, just, just cracking on, really. Cracking on. All right, just, then. Uh... What did you think to the show at the weekend, Matt? The Sky Show, the BT Show. Both of them. What do you think? Um. Bentley against uh, Heffron. What do you think to that fight? Well, I thought it was going to. Obviously, I didn't expect it to go that. I didn't expect it to go that early. I did expect a stoppage, but I expected it to go to the later rounds. But obviously, where he got the, um, where he landed that um, punch, and his eye just swollen up. You knew that was beginning from the end, and he did the the way Bentley his crisp shots was just opening, just making the eye continually worse. The round after it happened. You know that really that well, as soon as the eye popped up, you know that's beginning the end anyway. And uh, yeah, he, sm he smelt blood when he see that, and uh, I was pretty impressed. Really, I was impressed with uh, the way he fought. Yeah, the way he fought good. Not just a puncher, you know. He, he was he sold as a puncher, but he got good skills, good skills, and uh, I just enjoyed watching him fight. Really, to be fair. I enjoy, I enjoy watching him fight, and uh, even even Heffron going forward, he's going to be in he's going to be in some good entertaining fights. So just because he's lo just because he's lost and he's lost like that, don't mean that I won't watch I won't watch um, I won't watch him again either. So uh, you know what you're going to get with these sort of fighters. Yeah. So um, yeah. it's um, just because a fighter loses, I don't. I think boxing's too fickle where as soon as they lost, they're like, oh, wait, he, he's this and he's that. Look, at the end of the day, everyone finds their level in the sport. And he's a, he's a Brit, he's British, maybe European level fight. There's no shame in that. So, yeah, going forward, look, looking forward to seeing them both in some good scraps. And, um, and yeah, I thought, that well, Tommy Fury's opponent was he was dreadful to be fair there's not much really you can say you knew what was really going to happen so um, yeah not, but we can't really have a go at Tommy Fury cause can't have a go fight, no it? absolutely full fight he's just le he's just learning and uh, he's only young isn't he so he's got pl yeah. he's got plenty of time to develop plenty of time to develop so, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Look, we'll see, see how he gets on. And, uh, yeah, my friend, uh, Power Mine, his friend, I uh, don't know how you pronounce, uh, pronounce the fella's name, middleweight, um, mixed race kid. Um, I was in Northern Ireland, Northern Ireland he's from. And uh, he thought, um, is it the Camden caretaker? Yeah. And... Uh, I've seen him fight a few times before, but uh, yeah, I was in, I was impressed. I was impressed by him as well. Good, good fighter coming up, and um, I suppose he'd be knocking on the door area English level pretty soon. And uh, oh. he's another, he was another one, Russ. A good as soon as um, as soon as he got his opponent out, smelt blood and went for the finish and took him out. What did so, you think uh, that's to... all I... Go on. Oh, sorry. sorry, mate. Sorry, mate. Go on. What did you think to uh, the rest of France show? A bit pounding, wasn't it? 
Yeah, it worked, but it didn't, didn't really do anything for me. A couple right. of um, low, low, you can, a couple of uh, low budgeted fights. So it, the, the card felt like it was fairly cheap to uh, put on, didn't it? He's mm, having to make best of a bad job, isn't he, Bricktop? Yeah. So. All right then. Moving on from Bricktop, we'll come back to him later. Not you're not going to get off the hook, Bricktop. Uh, the Bob Aram show. We're, we're building up to a, a, a crescendo here. The Bob Aram show. What do you think to that? Forget Kelbro. What did you th- start off with, Frank Coleman? <laughs> There's more to talk about what happened at the end, really. <laughs> well, that's what I'm coming to. What were the fight? Five and a half minutes? Yeah. And then they take 28 it? minutes, 30 minutes to make a decision on VAR. How can them people it, look themselves in the mirror in the morning, uh, Matt? The VAR the State <laughs> Athletic Commission. Right. It's a, it's, it's, it's a fiasco, isn't it? I don't. Do, do you know what, Rusty? Yeah, boy, you said a lot about the board and that, and uh, they don't do instant replays over here. From well, they did it just a bit same as that, wouldn't it? it? Would they make a better? Would they make a better job of it? No, probably not. No, the, no, no. It'd be the same, wouldn't it? No, it would be the same. It'd be the same. This is what this VAR thing, or whatever it's called in America, they brought that out to show that. Boxing is not corrupt, aren't they? Am I right? This is why they're champions for it. So they bring it out to show it's not corrupt, and then something like that happens, which is probably you're probably going to get four or five of them a year in the whole sport. But they, they bring it out to use it over something like that, and then they go and make a decision like that. And even Helen Mirren tweeted about it or Instagrammed about it, whatever they call it. I've never seen that like that, have you? It was it, it was it was a strange one, weren't it? it, it I just don't. You've got you've got time. You've got at least five, ten, fifteen minutes to make a decision there. Watch it back two or three times. If you it, tw- twice, you only should have to watch it back twice if you're second guessing yourself. But you, like the, the video evidence is there. How can you not? How can you not see that? And and then to make the decision they've made is beyond me. It's um. The truth is, isn't it? It's corruption. Can't be incompetent because they can see what's happened. So it's corruption, isn't it? It's in front of the fucking eyes. It's like I mean, me going to court, isn't it, for what we were on about earlier. That in, that in London, that Kennington town, where they've got me on camera, which they can't. So I could either say it was Hamish McDougall driving me, me car, and he, he bought it off me the day before. He lives in a bed and breakfast in Hyde Park, Lancaster. I can't, you can hardly say it was Hamish, can I? Because they've got me in Porky outfit, haven't they? <laughs> you know, so, so I'm knackered, aren't I? But, Absolutely. So I'm hardly going to say, they're hardly going to say, no, that ain't porky, it's Amish. So it's like that. Is it a punch or is it an headbutt? It, it was a, a punch, but it sort of caught him with fun or something. It don't matter, it's still a hand, isn't it? It's not a head, is it? Isn't it? You know where I'm coming from? Yeah. So how can they come to that ex- uh, uh, conclusion? Why doesn't the people who've made them decisions, why aren't they accountable? This is what we want. We want accountability. It's like that guy with the Everton Liverpool. He, he, he brought the 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 the, ref, the the goalkeeper brought Van Dijk in half, didn't he? With tackle, it was a straight red, probably a free match ban even more. Nothing happened. So why why aren't people coming out and being punished and demoted? And are these people going to be demoted? It's like the border control. Why don't they get out when they make bad decisions? Because it's just doing what it's the wild, wild west. If this were any other sport, it'd be dealt with, wouldn't it? This quick boxing. You see Bob Adam going off about it, 
and um, it, it just told you everything you need to know and the, the State Athletic Commission are not getting interviewed after but didn't really want to comment about it and like you've got to come out and just say what's what you listen at the end of the day you got to, you got to explain to the media there you got to explain why you made that decision what you see and, ex, and ex, explain yourself in a thorough manner just so you can like we can understand why you've made that specific decision but after the LRI come out and went against the Nevada State Athletic Commission it was five to one it yeah exactly so why can't they reverse the decision just reverse it but it's too late now isn't it just all the, just to, just just do the trilogy, just do the trilogy for right there with them two. Yeah. Uh, so I don't I don't know where they're gonna go, Russ. I don't know what they're gonna do. But um, I know I know Bob Aaron weren't too happy about it. So. What about Kel Brook then? Where do we start? Where do we end with him? Well, my argument is this. When Crawford, who were losing the fight at the time, wasn't it? I think you were mm. gathering data on it at the beginning. Crawford decided, you know what, I'm going to get him out of here. Switched to Southpaw, didn't he? Why didn't Kel Brook switch to Southpaw with him? Because he's supposed to be a switch hitter from the Ingle gym. So why didn't he switch? You keep going on about the single style. Why didn't you switch? I don't know, Russ. This is a million-dollar question. Why didn't he switch? Because well, as soon as he switched to Southpaw, the jab was taken away straight away. And really, the, the, right, the, the right hand, which he did catch him with a couple of times, right hand was there for, for Brook. But, I mean, was it an inve inevitable what was going to happen? Yeah, probably. I expect it to happen a lot later though. I expect it to go seven, eight, maybe nine, maybe even ten rounds. Yeah. But just a good, just, you can just, you could just see the, the fight is just, the, the fight's just probably summed up his whole career, in it? Just from one to, then one oh, to yeah. four rounds. You know, it's starting so bright, doing really well. And then as you further along, Come to the third and fourth round, it's just it's just falling apart, and I suppose that's the pat that's yeah that's the pattern of his career, Russ, isn't it? Really, if you think if you think about it from that point of view, I mean, I've seen the uh, I've seen that that the chopping right hand over the top, which uh, he caught him with, which is the beginning of the end. I've seen it from a couple of angles right now, and uh, listen. He, you walk into that shot and oh, he didn't see the shot come in. It caught him by surprise. But that sort of shot, especially coming from Crawford, because Crawford ain't a big punch. He's a sharp puncher. It's, it's, the, it's the speed. It's, it's his speed and his timing that creates the power. But he's a, he's a smaller guy, you know. So, like, obviously them punches can surprise you. But it, it looked like he was more off balance. Yeah. But just the, the way... The, the, what, the, the, his reaction to after that punch and it just looked like it's just punch resistance is completely gone to be fair yeah yeah and, and that, is it, it, listen he probably shouldn't have been fighting his, uh, it, he probably shouldn't have been fighting a welterweight since probably 2016 before maybe even the Golovkin fight you know I'm sure we should probably go on to it or whatever come to come to it talking about his career but he, he probably hasn't been a welterweight for years but just been getting down there just because the money's there but at what what point does it become look it's unsafe to make that weight well he had a nutritionist on board didn't they, they said he was stronger faster quicker than a speeding bullet and eating steak i'm eating steak well, I've told that talk before that they've done the weight correctly. They passed every check. They passed every check weighing leading up to the fight. They completed all the dates and all the check weighings. So there can't be a problem, can there? There's no excuses. I don't want to hear about all this. He's not a 147 guy. He passed all the checks. So 
So that, and, and they got these expert nutrition and strength and conditioner guys on board. And before you know where you are, they're in the corner and they're lapping your hands and they're telling everybody that you're family, your family, like right, family, like right, family. Well, why are these people coming out now saying they'll ride again with them at 154? You know what I mean? It's sad, isn't it? Already, but Ken, body's on slabs. <laughs> body's, body's still warm on slab. And they're wanting to pump him up to 154. Because he's his bro. He's my bro. Family. You see, what this is boxing, isn't it? You know the vultures? Meal tickets got yeah. out to retire, doesn't they? Yeah, I think he should probably. He think he should probably retire. To be retire, fair, retire, mate. Punch resistance gone and done, done, mate. Got to retire. You know, I know that will pump him up at one five four for Leafy Smith. Kel rides again, gets them another payday. Walking about, thinking the superstars flying all over for training camps and warm weather. This and partying that. Yeah, we have all do that, can't we? While kids are getting knocked about, punch. There's no left. There's no left in him. He's a shell of a man. Just because he's muscular and he looks stripped down on the weigh-in, you're supposed to look like that on the weigh-in. You've been starving yourself, aren't you, to get to that weight? And then you rehydrate. But it's what's behind that. David A. Lee, he looked all right against Bellew, didn't he? he? He's another one, David A., with big strength and condition, nutrition man, with that. That Ruben Tavares. Yeah, what happened there? Got knocked out twice. We're having with Dylan White. He was another one stronger, faster, quicker than a speeding bullet. Eating kangaroo meat. Are you with me? What happened to him? He got knocked out. He had that Ruben as well, didn't he? Where I'm coming from. Is there a pattern here? Do we see a pattern? Is it, well, it's not just promoters and managers that leech off fighters. It's other people as well. Nutrition and strength, guys. Are you telling me a trainer can't tell a fighter when to lift a few weights, when to go sprinting and when to, when to eat. Well, where, where are we heading here with all these people hanging around fighters? Where are we going, Matt, with it? Where? I think it's the, I think, listen, depending what stance you got, I think if the, if, if, if these people, the, the people, there's not, I don't think there's no wrong with strength and conditioning people. Uh, strength and conditioning but at the end of the day it's got to be under the trainer so the trainer's got to be the trainer's got to be telling them look see if you do a strength and conditioning in the morning you can't go too overboard if, the, if he's sparring late at night so it's got, you've got to be working with the trainer and got got to know what the, the trainer wants so I don't think I don't think they're bad I don't think they're a bad thing but He shouldn't, it's just, I don't know, listen, I, I didn't even get out for the fight, Russ, but it's just, uh, I think, I, kn I knew in the back, even though I wanted him to win, I knew in the back of my mind what was going to happen. I just thought it was it was going to be a uh, a gradual, gradual beatdown going into the later rounds. And obviously, they're, they're, they're a lot worse than actually what he's taken, but, I mean, he's not been in that, he's not been in that many wars, is he, for his for him to be taking punches like that. So it's either got to be the weight or it's either got to be just a bit of everything, I suppose, the weight, the catching up the way way he used to live. I mean, yeah, that I don't buy into that, mate. I don't buy into that. He's been knocked out what? three times when he stepped up. Right? So as far as I'm concerned, if he comes back again, he's got to get rid of them all. You know, when you've got same people around for all the time and you're getting knocked out, what's all that about? You know, you know, like, for example, if I had some of the MOT in cars from here and they kept, they kept doing job crap and, and people were driving off with him and brakes were going, I'm not going to use that guy again, am I? You're getting your head smashed in in a ring, right? you got to look and say, I'm doing something wrong here. Have I got all wrong? Have I got the right people around me? The answer's no, isn't it? All right. Yeah. Here's, here's, here's a curveball for you. What's the greatest win by a welterweight fighting in America from England? Probably Louis Donegan, isn't it? Right, and who did he beat? Donald Curry. Right, was he number one pound for pound in the world at the time? Correct. 
Yeah, right. So you've got Donald Curry, Ring Magazine, Fire Twitter Year, blah, blah, blah. At the time, I think he was joint with Agler, one here, I forget now, but. So he's best well to eat world. Lloyd Unigan. Lloyd Unigan never had a strength and conditioner. Never had a nutritionist. He made the weight properly, like fighters are supposed to do. But fighters are looking for an edge all the time. And you get these people hanging around them. They meet them at after parties and that, and they start chatting shit in their e roll. And then before you know where you are, they're pulling spreadsheets out, data, apps on the phones, analytics, and all sorts. And they get into their heads. Before you know where you are, they're on the payroll. And then not further down the line, they're wrapping hands, then they're in corner, and then they're holding pads, and it just gets out of fucking control, mate. They need to out them out of boxing. A lot of them. It's got to be a trainer who does everything. You've got to have full control, trainer. That's just my opinion. People might say, okay, check your food out, nutritionist and strength and conditioner's mouth. Well, if they're that good, they'll get work anywhere else, won't they? In another sport. If they're that good. They're only in boxing because they can't get work anywhere. Am I right? I know I'm fucking right, mate. That's the problem. It's another problem. That needs to go in the problem box with border control and the Vardas Peak Athletic Commission and fucking sanctioning bodies. What do you reckon? <laughs> uh, I just, uh, it's, um... Don't you be sitting on the fence, Mark, with this one. <laughs> Look, with 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 new with nutritionists and that, I don't. If they can get you to the weight, uh, I I don't think they're a bad thing. I don't I don't think nutritionists are a bad Matt thing. Bruno never had one. I know, but but if you've been doing your diet yourself, yeah, boy. Right, but if, so, if someone can help you make make that Pacific weight class more safer and you can feel more energized i think i don't think they're a bad thing paying people to tell you what to put in your mouth it's all online oh my God. yeah i know but uh, I, I know but a lot of these are cook a lot of these are cooks as well ain't they i'm talking about that i'm talking about for the I'm bigger cooked. camps plus they yeah, cook for you and they'll do your nutrition so we're talking here that edges people want can't anybody grill a fucking chicken no more? Have they got a George Foreman? You put it on Georgie, don't you? Don't have it in a sauce, just have a dry piece of chicken breast. Bit of asparagus. It's not rocket science, is it? People are complicating matters. They're complicating the sport. And kids are having to fork out. These people are all going to want pain, aren't they? Did I tell you the first time, right? I ever, I ever had a proper sit down with Fox years ago. Turned out we a big bag on his own. He did everything himself. He went, he, he achieved what he achieved. He didn't have a nutritionist, he didn't have a strength and conditioner. McCracken didn't go with him in the morning when he did his runs. He did it all himself. He just had McCracken put technical stuff at the sparring. These yeah, but, things yeah. that Kel brought, he's been around the game since he was 10. So he's been in the game 24 a year, right? Kel Brook knows when to eat, when to sleep, when to train, and when to go to bed. Yeah, he might have problems sticking to all that, but that, that's his own dedication problem, isn't it? Like David Allen. So does he need a chaperone, or does he need somebody to actually do it all for him? What, what, what? Because the, 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 you're only training, aren't you? For, for two hours a day, aren't you? So what are you doing for other 22 hours? Well, I don't get it, mate. All these people Wait. that ponce into ponces, mate. The ponce in the way in. The creating work that's not even there. A trainer can do all that, mate. A trainer, mate. I'm telling you, mate, honestly. I'm that's my opinion. I'm entitled to it, but there's too many noses in the fucking trough. And the complicating kids are. Kel Brook probably don't know whether he's coming or going. He's probably torn here, he's probably torn by this person, torn by that way. He probably just doesn't know what to do. Now he's like, he's already got people coming out. Hey, I'll, 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 I'm, I'm going to back him if he fights at 154. He's a corpse. He's been dug up from City Road Cemetery, Sheffield. He's a corpse, mate. Now he's a walking corpse. He's there to get smashed up now, mate. 
If he fights again now, he's damaged. Go what if he gets hit again? Because you know in boxing, you get hit in the face, don't you? It's like going in the shower in the morning. You're going to get wet, aren't you? So if Kel Brook gets hit again, say first round this time, is he going to turn around and then just take his money and go? Is that how he's going to want to go out? You go out at the top like Crawford, pound for pound, best he lost. to give it his best shot. It didn't work out. You go, don't you? You make your entrance and go. You part. Do you think he should come back at 154, Matt? Come on. No, I'm not saying he should. Uh, if it, listen, if I was him and probably made the money, I would, I would have done. But I'm just trying. I just don't think he should have been fighting at that weight. For I don't think he should have been fighting that weight for a long time. You know, I know you're saying about listen, listen. You're making good points about Foch and Foch compared to him, but they're two to totally different characters, mate. Foch has got that discipline. That's why he was going to his 36, 37. He don't blow up in between. Kelbrook does, so he needs that. He needs that. He needed that people around him to get him back to where. That's why he needed so long camps. Do you know what I mean? Needed them long camps to get down to that way. Do you know what I mean? Or even yeah, have a chance he, of making that way. Who's that? Yeah, of course. I'm not saying. Every, listen, everything's everything's um, is self. Um, Everything's self sabotage. I think he lets you know? people get in his ear, me. I think too many people get in his ear and he makes the wrong decisions. That's what I think. I think because it's the, it's sort of, the book's got to stop with the fighter. The fighter sooner or later has to say, right, who have I got around me here that's benefiting me? Who? Who does he trust? Who does he trust, Kel Brook, now? Does he pack in or does he come back at 154? Who, does, who can he trust? And if he comes back at 154, do you see him beating Charlo or Beefy Smith? I don't. I think Beefy Smith no, smashes him to bits. Probably now he does, yeah. Yeah, I think he does. I think it's like, that's not a 50 50, though. That was a 60 40 fight two years yeah. ago. Now, two years ago, it's a 70 30 fight in Beefy's favour. Yeah, I'd have, had, I'd have had Book to do a job on him. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I'd have, I I'd have had, two years ago, Russ. Two hey. years ago, I'd have had book to two years ago, I'd have had book to do a job on him, and just to win convincingly and really do a number on him, possibly, depending how he carried the weight up. Because we've not seen we've not seen him against the sod. So you don't even know how good he is at the weight because we've not seen him against anyone decent at the weight. No, we're not. No, we're not. See, this is listen. We, we listen. Listen, we'll talk a little bit more about it. Obviously, we'll move on, but like that nutritionist guy, everyone coming out on IFL after the next day, and the nutritionist guy telling, t saying that how tough it was to make the the weight for the Golovkin fight. Yeah, do so you make your one four seven fighter making that weight? Yeah, what, and then you're getting is yeah. So you're struggling to get down to one sixty. Yeah, and, but like, where's he coming down from? To make 160, yeah. like I, I couldn't believe what I couldn't believe. 195, like, pounds. Wait, 14 and a half stone or something. Like, what's that? 14 and a half. That's 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, a camp, right? He, did, he used to do two week on his own, then twelve week we roll. He said, "You know, a fighter is weight. He could never be for one pound a week. That's it, and that's just from from that weight up. Down, you're probably going to be less a week, isn't it? But smaller guys. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So a pound a week you can knock off in camp, can't you? But when you're knocking off like fifty pound, Ricky Atten and Look at Peter Fury, they used to take six and seven stone off Tyson. So this is what Ben Davidson did. He took eight stone off him, you know, eight and a half. That weren't, we weren't really anything different to what Peter did in them eight camps he had with him, were it? You know what I mean? Peter was taking six or seven stone off every time. He did eight fights with Tyson, didn't he, Peter? And I dare say it was probably the same way when Peter's late brother trained him. So fighters have to live yeah, their but... life, don't they, in between. <laughs> But, but 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 even a couple of years ago, after Tyson losing their weight, yeah, Russ, the pennies dropped with him now that he can't get back up to them weights again. 
Yeah. Mm. The penny's not the penny's never dropped with Kell Brook, has it? He's not got to he's not got to twenty eight, twenty he's thirty four now. He's, he should have the penny should have dropped for the Porter fight or even before then, or mate struggling with the Carson Jones fight. We're going life and death with him in the first fight, struggling to get down to the weight. You you might you must want to think to yourself, look, I don't even want to get, I don't want to ever go through that again to struggle to get down to that weight. Yeah, so you got to learn, you you got to learn your lesson, and clearly he hasn't, is he? And he's no. and he, it's just cost, it's cost him, it's cost him. It's just he's not listening. He's not the only fighter that blow, blows up ridiculous, blows up ridiculously, but. In the end, it takes his toll. And you see on Saturday night, it, it just, it, listen, he might have never even beat, he might have never, might have never ever, ever beat Crawford anyway. Yeah. But that version never, in hindsight, didn't stand a chance. But I think, listen, even even coming out, even after coming away from the, the Spence and the Spence fight and, and then coming back, I think he got offered. He could have had the Cotto fight, uh, um, uh, his retirement fight when he fought that Saddam Ali. I think he could have had that fight. He got offered that fight, and he couldn't make 154 in time for the for the for the Dece- for the December fight. So at the end of the day, that would have been a a great opportunity for him. Yeah. But, so and it, 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 go on, sorry. No, so so we're leaving the. Leaving the blame with Calbrook, Brook, then. I think it's all. I think it's collective. It's easy to point fingers, but I just think the whole management promoter. I think everyone's People got to take around the blame, him, but... hangers on. He's got a bigger entourage than Rod Stewart now, hasn't he, Kel? Well, he did have. I don't know if he will now. But moving on, then we'll close it off with a question about Kel Brook. Go on. The only fight out there really for him is Khan or Beefy, Beefy Smith in it. But if it's Amir Khan, what weight will it be at? And do the fans want to see it? Or is it overcooked? I think it's overcooked and I don't think the fans will want to see it. And the, Khan have won it at 47 because he knows he's really tight at that weight. When maybe Khan... Maybe, Maybe Khan's a lot better at that weight, so he he may can get even if he has to suffer to get down to the weight himself because he's not he's he's not made the weight in a long time either. But he, he's coming up. He, he's not as big, is he? So he's never going to struggle as much as what Brook has. So, but I'm not inter- I'm not interested. I'm not interested. To be fair, it's uh, that's done now. That's yeah. done, and uh, it's a shame. It's a shame because it's. Um, Glass is not even half full with Kelbrook either, is it? No, this this is another problem as well. Is that he's always wanted that fight when he could have probably he could have probably easily got that fight if it had gone and fought in America and then maybe come back. There was what. Even even if he'd have got even if he'd have gone and got a belt at light middleweight, he could have probably had a catch a catch weight fight with him. But it's all it's all um, it's all in hindsight now, isn't it? And it's just uh, just a shame, isn't it? Because he's it's just it's like a waste. It's, it's just just a waste. I don't yeah. know what more to. I don't know what more. There's there's so many fights I've wanted to see him in, and you never we ne- we were never get, never going to see him. So pointless talking about it. But right, uh, moving on, so we've covered Kelbrook uh, and his situation. We've covered the Franco one. We've done the Frank Warren show, Bentley Efron. Good luck to Mark Efron and you come back. Uh, the women's boxing on Eddie Hill's show, the 4 and 0 super heavyweight former amateur star, free by way of from Billy Ricky. <laughs> you like that one, don't you, Mark? <laughs> right, Eddie Hills. What about his show at weekend? Mitchell Ball you know, um... against somebody whose, whose name I can't pronounce. What do you think to that? Um, I see. I, I, I see it from the. 
about fourth round onwards. So I didn't really, I didn't see all that far. I see a lot of, I see a lot of missing. I see the other girl doing a lot of running, but the the other girl made her look silly at times, really. Yeah. Yeah. So I wasn't. Well, I had ball losing that anyway. I had a little. Yeah, I, I, she was hitting fresh air, mate. She was hitting fresh air a lot of the time. Is that how she you get rewarded mate. for it? Because Ritson, he got rewarded, didn't it, for it against Vasquez? <laughs> and, and yeah, but Kerry yeah, but, but 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 the big difference, the big difference there with is that the, the, the girl was making a miss, but she wasn't making a pay when Vasquez yeah. was just popping him and making him pay. Yeah. You can make someone miss all you, you can make someone miss all you want and run around the ring. You got you got to make them pay. All right, then. You know, you get, if you want to go on that back, if you want to go on the back foot like the, the way that, that girl did, yeah. you, you, you got to be making a way, you got to be making a, a, a pay and clearly, Landing the cleaner punches. I ain't saying she didn't land the cleaner punches. She just didn't land enough and, and make her pay enough to stamp her authority on the fight. So Rachel Ball's going to fight for the world title next. So if that's world title level, Rachel Ball, what is Southern Area level in women's boxing? Tell me. What oh, your guess. Your your guess is as good as mine, mate. Well, well, well what? If if Shannon Corton is going to fight Rachel Ball for a world title next year, what level is Southern Area and English level? And there's, there's, no, there's no, the, the, Russ, there's no Southern Area or British level, is there? Because no, it don't even exist. It doesn't exist, does it? Well, well okay. It then doesn't... what about British British level? I and mean, how many people's in that weight class in Britain? Is a four or two? I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't even be able to tell you. Two one. I mean, Shannon Corton is weight class. But last last, last a couple of fights back, they were just there with somebody else. So they can't be a British title, can they? Because they can't be eliminators. So if they can't be British title eliminators because there's not enough women, how can we have world titles? Why can't we just call it a boxing belt or something or a master's belt or something? How can they be classed as world titles and sold to the public as world titles? I don't get it. Because when a proper world title fighter comes in to fight these people, they bash them up, don't they? Like Savannah Marshall, Katie Taylor, they bash them, don't they? Um, it's it's got a lot of there's a lot of work to do with oh, oh, women's boxing. Oh my god! A lot. Just putting a show on with three world title fights, and you've got Macklin and Bean polishing the turd. I mean, what did you think to? Uh, what did you think to the cheerleading for Katie Taylor fight? Well, I think, do you know what? To be fair, I don't think they, they, they're going to they're gonna cheer. They, they, they're going to, but with that opponent... It was 10 I mean, seconds though, wasn't it? It was. It, listen, it, it was... Um, it, 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 was an, it was an embarrassment watching that fight. I've... I mean, just you could just see from the first round onwards the the difference between speed and just just skill and that it, the, the bird didn't even belong didn't belong in the ring with her from the word go. Yeah, she was te she was terrible. It got to about the fifth round, and I'm shouting at the screen, saying, "Pull her out!" She should have been pulled out because she just took a she took an absolute beating. She was slow, she was ponderous, and and I mean everyone come listen, Katie Taylor did look great, yeah. But she's gonna look great against someone like that. You're gonna you know they're not real like they're, they're not real like they're not summing up how bad that opponent was. And listen, all right, well, fair enough, it was a mandatory, whatever. But oh, she was terrible, she was terrible. Tough. Give her credit, mate. She hung in there, but the, re the referee should have stopped that, but by six, seven rounds, should have stopped that because there wasn't even barely anything coming back from her. No. So the only reason she couldn't hurt her because she was naturally the bigger, the bigger woman, the bigger woman. So and she, even though she got put down, she you could see she could soak up the shots because she was a lot bigger than her. But 
Oh, well, the, the, the fight was embar- fight was embarrassing, and it was that unsided. It, it was that one-sided. After four or five rounds, it was uncomfortable to watch. All right, then moving on. What do you think to Terry Harper's fight against that another one whose name I can't pronounce? Some dinner lady. What do you think to that? Yeah. The same sort of thing. She was slow. She was just very one pace, slow, ponderous. ponderous. Yeah. She wasn't. She just. Um, she was just out of her depth, weren't she, really, to be fair? Can you, no, can you so, explain to me how they've got Natasha Jonas, who's probably the best looking woman in female boxing in, from England, isn't she? They've got Natasha Jonas in Sky Bubble, whatever they call it, studio or something, sat next to. Johnny Nelson and that Anna Woolhouse. Can you explain to me how they're talking about Natasha Jonas fighting Katie Taylor, but yet nothing was mentioned about this rematch with Terry Harper? Why, why is that not happening? Is he I want to get Terry Harper beat. Southport. He can't fight on inside. He only wants to keep it long and stay on outside. What, what do you think? What's happening there? I don't think she want, I don't think they wanted to get her beat. I think they want to protect her. Yeah, because she used to work in the shipping. I don't even think that. I think probably they could probably what's what's local to her that she can she can she she can fight. Well, Steffi Wool's not putting no shows in at the moment, is he? I hope Steffi yeah, he, doing? Real name Andrew yeah, Walcroft. He, he's not putting no shows on for the foreseeable future. So he's going to want to have a reigning, isn't he? He doesn't look like he's bothered about any of his other fighters except her. Now, so he's not going to want to put her in with Jonas, get beat and then phase, it, phase out and end up off at scene, is it? So I think that they're going to keep Terry Harper in the mix, fighting these dinner ladies and get as much money out of the job as they can. And you can't blame him really because he put the money up for IBO when she went IBO to get her in the mix. So him that told me IBO shit and not a proper world title not long ago. But I'm a big champion of the IBO, me, aren't I? So, but uh, what do you think about that? Do you think that she'll not fight Jonas? Not the way, the way, not the way they're talking, especially now they've gone to the effort of signing the other people in the weight class, except, except for the that Michaela Mayer. There's no, they've got the two other champions there. Unless they match Jonas with the other one and then just do a unification and then fight the other girl, I'm I'm not too sure how that's going to work. Yeah. I'm not too sure what, what route they're going to go, but I mean, does tip, does, um, they might even, they probably, listen, they probably wanted to, once fans are back, they probably want to headline in a local arena or go to somewhere. Where can they go? They wouldn't go to the Doncaster Dome, would they, or would they? Would she sell that out? No, she won't sell Donny Dome out, no. no. I, I just think they're just going to keep just just keep her there and just keep keep earning because they put her in again with Jonas. I mean, she's going to have to win convincingly because majority of people thought she lost. So... But we want to see that fight again. Yeah, but yeah, it should be a rematch. Fans... If she'd had a loss and it was a decision that had gone to Jonas, they'd have been rematch anyway. But uh, all right, then moving the, on. The, but, but before the, before we get away from that point, yeah, Russ. Right, there's no. You can see that there's not going to be no rematch because there's no narrative leading into a rematch. Is there? There's no talk. They didn't even have no, that girl, Jonas, Natasha Jonas. Talking about the fight with Terry Harper when Terry when she was giving an analysis on the fight, she never even she, then nothing was said. I couldn't believe it. I thought that's why they got her on. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what I mean. All right then. I'm. I'm not interested really on majority of it to be fair, Russ. But I'll tell you what I did like just before you get away from that card. I enjoyed that Jack Cullen Docky fight. I thought that was yeah, a good yeah. fight, a good, a good scrap, yeah. And um, I'm pleased. I'm pleased that Jack Cullen win because bookies didn't give him much of a chance. Well, and if you look at the odds at bookies, they were all one to seven up to one to yep. one hundred and fifty all the way down board, weren't they? All on fighters. 
And he so was it, listen, one that caused a problem. Money Doherty was the only one who lost, wasn't it? Yeah, and he was brought. He was brought in. Let's be honest. He was brought in to lose, weren't he? Yeah. He was brought in to lose, and uh, it's good to see someone upset the apple cart. So uh, I enjoyed yeah. that. And listen, that kid can come back again, but obviously he's got he's got stuff to work on. But right, then. Uh, I think he's only young. Tyson Fury, Wilder. Joshua Pulas, there's a rematch for Joshua Pulas. What do you think of that? You got to elaborate. What do you mean? Tyson, uh, sorry, Anthony Joshua against Pulas is a mandatory fight, isn't it? Yeah. We both agree on that. So how yeah. is there a rematch clause when it's a mandatory? There's not supposed to be rematch clauses, but there's a rematch clause. But the way for Vladimir, Vladimir against Tyson, won't they? Well, it comes down to money, doesn't it, Russ? Yeah. It comes down. It comes down to money and protecting, protect, protecting yourself. They, they so don't take Poole this. And they wins, don't. If Poole left, left to do the rematch, there, we've got a rematch yeah. like the Ruiz one. So, so yeah. that if there's a rematch clause, then so that's going to put. That's more or less saying they don't want the the Fury Joshua fight next year, then, isn't it? I don't, no, I don't. I don't in circles I, again. I don't think he's that. I just think he's protecting themselves because even if it's a one-sided, just say Pulev absolutely catches him in the first round and absolutely it's a one-sided pummeling. Yeah, they, listen, it's another. They, they can sell it as another rematch, and then it's another payday, isn't it? But what if it's a close decision and Pulev wins on points? Is that a rematch as well? I suppose it is, yeah. It's oh, a good, it's a it's, it, so it's a rematch then if Paul F wins, we agree on that then, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All oh, right, so that's it. Make the deal, didn't it? It make it makes the deal, Russ. It, they, it's the, they do a side deal and that. You they do a side deal unless you unless he doesn't want to do a deal and it had gone to purse bids. And then whoever wins the bid is like whatever favouring the IBF. I've got IBF but, law book in here somewhere. He pro- Russ, he's probably it's getting... Home, it's at home in my briefcase under my bed, but listen. The IBF rule book. Go online, everybody, and check it. Mandatories. No rematches, clauses in the contract to mandatories unless negotiated by the promoters. But very rarely does it happen. Because that, what's the whole point of getting into a position to be a mandatory? If there's going to be a rematch, you might as well get rid of mandatories, haven't we? Yeah, well, this this is the it's the business side of it, isn't it? Why do you think yeah. you've seen Pavet? Why do you think? I'm think, losing why fucking think, will to live here, me with this. Ross, why do you think you've seen Pavetkin? Why do you think you've seen Pavetkin on Joshua's undercard and that fight in Dillian White? It's because he's got a contract with Matchroom. So after they made that fight with Joshua and Pavetkin, they put in a rematch clause. Because the uh, listen to what to, what Terry said to you, the Russians would have gone purse bid. They probably overpaid Povetkin and probably put a rematch clause in. If Joshua would have lost to Povetkin, he'd have, he'd have had his rematch. If 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 Joshua wins, you've got a free fight deal with us, and we we we'll stick you on undercards, and you get other opportunities. Yeah, that's basically what happened. That's what happens, isn't it? It's uh, that's what happened with Joseph Parker, isn't it? You know, yeah, it'd have had a re- Joshua, he had another opportunity with Dylan White, didn't he? You know, on a pay-per-view. So they got two pay-per-views, yeah. didn't they? So that's like yeah. a rematch, isn't it, basically? Because it's just about money, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, everything's, about mo- everything's about money. And when you've got someone, when you've got someone like Joshua, who's such a, who, who's, he's a, he's a, he, except, except for Tyson Fury or maybe a while, right? he's a strong A-side against anyone else, isn't he? Yeah. Whatever you say, whether you favour him or not to win the fight, he, he's the draw, isn't he? And they use that to, his, like Canelo, they use that to his advantage. He'll have a rematch clause against anyone he fights because you're going to earn the most money. So if Joshua, even though they say Joshua earns this, Joshua earns that, and it don't really matter what he earns, we ain't really bothered either way. He's probably not getting compensated the way people think he is. Then. 
what's led to believe, but right, you're right. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be like that, should it, Russ? It shouldn't no, be like that at all. But shit. they're pissing up our legs again. Fucking Joshua could get beat against Poole. What have we got then? Poole left Joshua in April or something. What the fucking hell's that? Or June? That's half a year gone next year. And then we've got Tyson Fury Wilder. That's got to happen now, hasn't it? He could be parked up another 10 months, Tyson, with this. They're going to... It's all legal tied up, isn't it? They're going to park yeah. him up. Al Eamon's going to park him up. Let Wilder get better. Because his head's obviously gone, hasn't it? And let Fury deteriorate. Getting older... And he might, his head might get done in. And that's, what, that's how it looks to me, because he got beat, didn't he, by Fury last time? He got a shell at him. He got hammered, so he'll not be keen to go in there again, so they might be trying to do that. I don't know, but what happened to Bricktop, the litigation man, why ain't he, why ain't he throwing lawyers about? Like for Caballel Fury fight, what happened to him, Bricktop? Nobody has him over, do they? It looks like he's not gone to lawyers, has he? No. Gen they, uh, they're they coming out with some excuse now, Russ. I ain't buying it for one second saying, oh, well, we couldn't make it work because there's no fans and we couldn't Load listen. Crap. They knew that before listen, they made it. They, they, they knew that there was never going to be fans. They, they knew that there was it was going to be and very unlikely. As well, Mark, does that mean that the Dubois-Joyce fight is going to get pulled? Somebody's going to have a fucking injury because... Are they going to pay them because they were going to use the Fury Caballel money, some of it, to pay them, were not they? Because that was a show week before, wasn't it? I think, I think BT are probably hoping that the the the, the pay per view with the Tyson Jones fight might help. A bit of that pay per view money might help with the Joyce the Bois putting a bit of money that in. BT are probably obviously chucking in a nice few quid for that fight. Do you know what I mean? They're, probably, they're not on millions, but they'd be earning several hundred thousands each for that fight. Yeah, so they must be... Each, aren't they, for that? Pardon? Yeah, yeah pro probably. Each. Probably, with no pay-per-view now and with no fans. So, yeah, obviously, so everyone's... They subsidise that with Fury money from pay-per-view, won't they? That's right. And now, that's no, not... Yeah. The, 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 bar, the bar, Joyce, could be in trouble, mate. I'm telling you, it could be... Somebody could have an injury... A bit put back again. I mean, it were getting put back when we had fans, and it were pay per view then. Now it's yeah. on, and there's no fans and no pay per view, and they're saying it's not getting put back. But yet, Fury Caballero's not on week after. Watch this space in next two weeks. Trust me. If it don't happen, I got it wrong. But how are they going to pay for it? I don't know. Yeah, their their hands being forced. Behind the yeah. scenes, you know, the hands well, being forced. I think they've all like, shit the pants and Al Eamon's giving them all run around because Tyson yeah. has been parked up now for 10 months, hasn't he? February will be 10 he's... months, right? Nine months, nine and a half months he's been parked up. So he's not yeah. going to this year, so that's 10 and a half months, gone. So we're going into ja we're going into January, into his 11 and a half month, we had a fight. So how much longer is it going to be? For Tyson to get ring he's not defended a world title yet. In fact, he's only defended one belt in his whole career. He defended a Commonwealth once. So I, I don't know. I don't know what's going I think, on. But I think he's going to have to fight Wilder again, mate. Yeah. I don't. Regard, regardless of what happens, mate, I think he's going to have to fight. I think they're legally, he probably have to. He, he's probably they're probably banged some rights, and they'll have to fight Wilder again. You know I think. what it is. It's added spice. Lift off. Compelling. Rough, turf, rugged. Exciting times ahead, Matt. This is why we love this sport so much, Johnny. Be real, people. Be real. I'm John Fury. I'm the best. Right then. Moving on. We'll finish off on. The David Allen story, the white rhino. He's only decided to retire, Matt. Retire from what? What's he fucking retiring from? Doing what? What is he fucking from? What is he retiring from? I don't get it. I keep seeing all these news bulletins and YouTube and fucking magazines and websites, forums, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Spotify. What is he retiring from, Matt? That's what I want to fucking know. 
Yo que si es que es mo en mi. Dave, what are you retiring I from, though? He's I think he's done. He's utter. I think he... I don't know. Man. So, in your opinion, do you think he'll fight again? 100% he will fight again. He used to retire all the time when, Pete, when he was up at Peter Fury's. He was in two years. He used to have nightmares the night before. They used to do these runs. Peter used to take them up and they do these runs. I think he wrote Windermere or something. He used to have nightmares the night before and he'd look for any way to get out of it. You were in the bottom. Tyson, they used to go on with him, the Eddie Chambers, but Dave, not a good trainer. Uh, nice kid, nice enough kid, but if you're not dedicated, and like I said, let me just say, let me just read this to you here. Let me just read this to you here, right. Here, oh, hang on a minute. Hang on. Hang on. Right, Dave Allen. Dave Allen. This is who the Amit trainers Dave Allen's are. Brendan Ingle, Robert McCracken, Dave Allen Sr., his old man. Kevin Sanders, Mick Marsden, Peter Fury, Steffi Bull, Dominic Ingle, Junior Witten, Adam Bull, Darren Barker, Jamie Moore. 12 trainers. Is it all their fault or is it Dave's fault that he's had a game at 20, his last fight, age 27? That was when his last fight was. So is it their fault or his fault? Who's at fault here? 12 trainers. 12. The dozen trainers. Who will be the 13th? Will it be called well? Because that could be an easy route back, couldn't it? Eddie Hearn's pet. Stronger, faster, quicker than a speeding bullet. He's eating kangaroo meat now, Porky. Is that what we're going to hear? Is that what we're going to hear? Is that the next script? Operation White Rhino, 13. He's on IFL. He does numbers. What are we, what, what, are we being fucked about here or what? Retiring from what? The only belt he's got out of boxing is one that holds his jeans up a fucking snake belt. Matt, help me out here. Over to you, Matt. I think he, I've listen, I think he is done. I think he's only got, listen, I think obviously he's not the most dedicated, but well, that's an understatement. He, he's not settled with no trainer. And um, I think he's just made, he's, he's been, probably made more money than he ever dreamed of out of boxing from where he first started, be, be, being this gimmick and that. But I mean, just the sparring stories, everything you hear about um, about the way he spars. I mean, you, you only got to view that Usyk. You see the uh, the Usyk sparring, and it's only it's only a little clip, Russ. But the way he's just marching forward and that with his hands down and and that, and then the way he took that shot, and then he's stumbling all over the gaff, and then and then it, the way he was talking in between that and our punch drunk he sounded. It, I found it pretty alarming, to be fair. I found it pretty alarming and pretty well, scary. Like yeah, like yeah. Like, uh, I, I just I, I found it. Um, Ooh, lion yeah, bar. Yeah, I, I, I found. So uh, no, I don't think he, I don't think you should ever fight fight again. And I, I don't think his art's in it. He's not. He don't really want it. He's probably. He's seen the ups. He's been up. He's been up and down with his sport. He's. Uh, he's been the B side. He's. He basically. He's been used and abused as well. So. So if he came back, would any manager, trainer, promoter be a scumbag to take him on? Um. Yeah, but they don't look if it like that. If he got though. hurt in the ring. Right, if he come back next year and got hurt and cabbaged or whatever, touch what it doesn't happen. But if he did, who would be to blame? Who? Would all them 12? Because let me just go through. I know most of the story done this. Right. I don't know about the first lot, but Peter Fury didn't want to work with him. Not dedicated enough. Steffi Bolt, same. Dominic Ingle. I don't know what went on there with him, him and then Junior Witt, I don't know. Adam Booth, after the week, said, not for me. Barker told him to retire. 
and I've really fucked Jamie Moore about. So there's no dedication there, is there? We know Dennis got rid of him up there, don't we? He's even admitted on IFL, David, hasn't he? That he took the piss. It's all right, he took the piss. Your job, David, is to go to the gym and train. That is it. It were on a plate for him. Listen, there were talent there, you know. But there's some of yeah. that going right up here. Some of that going right up here. And he needs it shaking out of him. And like I said, you know, already offers are coming in for him to work on IFL. Yeah, because he does views, doesn't it? Omar will be dark road. They'll put Dave Allen on job, won't he, Coogan? That's all they'll do. They'll put Dave Allen in, in the hot seat, won't they? And use it for their own financial gain. It's a hard, hard sport, isn't it? Well, David knows the score. He's manipulated himself into a wealthy position. And if I'm doing what? What? What has he achieved in boxing? What has he Listen, achieved? Some great nights. What great nights? He beat Lucas Brown. Is that it? What great nights are we talking? Achievement. Does that mean achievement in boxing is getting a few quid you don't have to win out? Just get a few quid and get a few views. Is that where we're heading now? Could you imagine telling that to somebody like Laurie Dunnigan or Frank Bruno or Mark Taylor, something like that? It's all right. Just, just not have to win anything in boxing to get out and be caught. Classed as what Martin Theobald said, a success, a success story. Yes, success financially, but at what cost? His brains are scrambled and he's out at sport at 27. Am I right? He's won fuck all, mate. He's not won fuck all. How's that a success? What is all that about? If you want to go fucking tell jokes, there's a comedy club up there in Sheffield. Or is it Dar Derbyshire? There's a comedy club up there on a Saturday night. Go up there with all comedians. Get on stage and tell your fucking story, funny stories. I don't want to see it in boxing. I don't want to see people coming out, grinning and laughing and joking, thinking it's all a big fucking... It's all a bit of a big joke. Dave, do you think it's a big... A fucking joke. Twelve fucking trainers there all put the time into you. Well, I wasn't taking it seriously. I'm Dave Allen, I eat lion ball. Uh, do you know do you know Steffi Bull? Let me tell you this about Steffi Bull. I don't go with him, I don't fucking like him. And if we ever meet, we're probably gonna get at it wherever we're at. There'll be nobody like Mick Whale to say, Oh, you can't don't start now. Is there's a so and so there? They won't be on to that next time. Mrs. and kids there, yeah. There'll be no ass up. But if they're in, it, we're on, we're at it. I don't like him. But what I will say is this. When he lived at the back of me, Dave Allen, Steffi Ball, every fucking day, morning, early morning, dinner time and, and night time, Steffi had a red Merc, same as mine, but red, 13 for it. He used to come round, this is a few years ago, and pick him up and then go to the gym. It's only a fuck. I can throw a cricket ball to his gym from my house, from my, from my old house. I thought, he's fucking taking him to the gym. And fetching him back and then coming back again for him and back. So you've got six trips a day, aren't you, with him? What's all that about? You have to be run about. Why can't you fucking get down to the gym yourself? Get a mountain bike and bike it. It's 1.4 fucking mile to that gym from my house. I know because I used to take my car for the tyres next door, that Jay's Auto. So if you can't walk 1.4 mile or bike it, what the fuck? What the fuck? You're not dedicated. And that was fucking years ago, five years ago. So if you're not dedicated then, and all these people are saying, look, if you're not going to gym, you're done. What the fucking hell's going on? All these people who've used and abused him, they've all known that, haven't they? And eventually, they've done his head in, haven't they, at match though. He's not jacked in because he's had enough. He's jacked in because he couldn't get that fight with Lovejoy, isn't he? He nearly managed to pull it off, didn't he? The top 15 ranking and then get to the promised land. He's that devastated he couldn't get that fight that his head's gone. Am I right? I fucking know I'm right. I live around here. That's why he's fucking saying he's packed it. Dave, load of bollocks, Dave. Come on my channel, I'll tell you to your face. Load of bollocks. You fucking packed in because you didn't get that love joy fight. Everybody knows it round here, but they're not going to fucking say it, Ali, because they've all got board licenses. He's packed in because he didn't get that fight. That's all. He's devastated. He flipped his lid, didn't he? And the fucking two right he did, he was fucked about, wasn't he? He don't want to be fighting Mark Bennett and Simon Vallali because he's fired him. He, they could beat him. That's true. 
That is the truth. When he can fight somebody and pinch a top 15 ranking and then pinch a massive world title money, he's had big money to fight price, hasn't he? So he knows the game. He's not going to put it all at risk to fight Mark Bennett, whose game is a pebble, and so is Viali. He might have enough in him to beat him, Viali, although I think he's shot. He's not going to fight Babic or Wardley. He could get beat. He nearly pulled it off. And look, look, there'll be another opening down the line, but just not now. So his head at the moment stood him. So he's gone for big PR, hasn't he? He's got the big, he's got what he's wanted, hasn't he? He's quick. But as the dust settles in the next few months, he'll think, you know what? I've still got something left in the tank. That's what will happen. That's what will happen. And then he'll look for a way back. It'll be a new trainer, somebody who can have Eddie Hearns here and get back in mix. And good luck to him if he does that because he's young for an anyway, isn't he? But he's gone about it all the wrong way. Do you remember me saying years ago? If he'd listened from day one and trained up at Denison, he could have gone to levels like Clinton Wood. Because Dennis had it all mapped out for him. But the thing is with Dennis, he don't give you it straight away. Big business people have it. I don't want to stand it to you. You've got to earn it. You see where I'm coming from? You've got to earn it. And if he can see that you're progressing, then it all comes. You know, like Jamie McDonnell. He had to earn it, but then it, it started coming, didn't it? Yeah, like Jamie, brand new Mercedes lift here. He used that. He started earning it. And, 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 uh, I can't explain it. Showing a willingness and dedication. And he never showed it from day one, David, did he? There was talent there. And he fucked Dennis about, didn't he, for a couple of years with him. After you fucked him about, that's it. He's not going to throw money at it. They're not going to keep throwing money at you if you're not going to go to the gym, are they? Why would you do that? It's all right getting a baby foal that's from a racehorse's spunk, and then you're behaving like a donkey, not training and slobbing about. You're not going to be a racehorse, are you? You're not going to be a stallion, are you? So why would you throw money at a donkey? You won't, would you? Same with Dave. If you can't put the work in, I'm not going to get there. So I, I don't. I think that's in his makeup not to train. I think it's something in his head where he can't do it all the time. But that's what I think anyway. Maybe I'm maybe I'm out of smoke. I shouldn't. But I don't give a fuck. I ain't bothered. Don't mean fuck all to me. I mean fuck all. That's my life. I don't want to see his shit on social media, what people send him all the time, and fucking lies and bullshit and all this, and, 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 and fucking making the sport look stupid, walk slobbing about in a dressing gown, Bart Simpson, Bart Simpson slippers, like it's all a big fucking laugh and a joke. Are we all fucking idiots or something? Do you think Eddie Hearn looked at him in that dressing gown and them slippers and thought, fucking hell, he's a top lad, Dave? No, oh, did he fuck? He's looked at him and thought, what the fuck am I doing here for this sport? That's what he's looked at. He's gone there to fight, hasn't he? Right? Amma's injured. Lovejoy, Don King, the Bond villains, Pope Club. So we're still in bubble. It's complete in bubble. Oh, somebody's had to pay for all that. Trainers come down. They're all ready. Do you want Mark Bennett, Viali? No, I'm not fighting them. Why? No, no, no. I'm better than that. Oh, you can go up Conor Ben card. All right. Don't con a bed card. He's on card in the up billboard. Dave Allen versus TBA. He's looked at that and he's thought, he's, he couldn't, couldn't go through it, mate. I know him, Dave. I know you. You couldn't go through it, mate. You couldn't go through with it. His ego won't let him. So dummies come out. That's what's happened. Nobody's going to come out here and say it. Jamie Moore's not going to come out here and fucking say he's fucking raging. That he's had to drive all the way to London eh, and drive back in the same day. Tell you what, then, if I'm wrong, Jamie Moore, when Dave comes back, will train Dave then, won't he? Won't. Won't. That won't happen. That won't happen. Trust me, we heard it all down the back, didn't we? Any man that goes through 12 trainers and gets out of the sport at tw well, 28 now, isn't he? What, what sort? Is that a messer? And then admits that he doesn't train. <laughs> I haven't been training. I haven't been training, me, I don't train. What the fucking hell? Public buying into? Eh? What the fucking hell? So I, I, I can't be doing I can't be doing it no more. You've wasted everybody's fucking time. Wasted everybody's time. Well, Alright, if you want to be a reality TV star, go on, tell you, don't you, and fucking good get a management group. 
Don't fucking waste people's time in boxing because I don't want to fucking see it. You're taking piss out of fucking kids who are turning over and want to be fucking boxers. They want to be boxers. You know these kids who are turning over? Nick Wales got about nine turning over, right, in his gym. The way you fought virus. There's other people, Glyn Rhodes' gym. Fuka's gym, Clinton Woods' gym. People, right, who are boxers or want to be boxers. Look at that. What sort of example is that setting for them? Hey. What, what, it's not setting a good example, Matt. What do you think? I ain't got no reason to disagree with you. I think, I think he, because he's got, I think he's just, he's got a popular, popularity and I think he's just got used to a certain way of life and he just don't, listen, you can't, listen, it's the oldest saying in the book, you, just, you can't play this too sport. It's too, dang, it's too, yeah, it's too, it's too, it's too dangerous to play and if it, it, he's not, he's not training every day, he's not in condition, he's just, He's just here and there. There's not, nothing, no consistency. If he'd have listened, him, he there. could have been a fantastic cruiserweight if he'd have listened years ago. Yeah, he, 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 he shouldn't even be fighting. He should be probably fighting at, at cruiserweight and probably should be listening to discipline life instead of being a small heavyweight. But he could have been a British champion at cruiserweight and maybe European years ago. If he'd have listened, he could have been an established cruiserweight now. Who maybe fought for a world title. Maybe at cruiserweight. Yeah. Not at heavyweight. Too small for an heavyweight. But it, listen, he's, he's made, he's got himself out there. He's made a name. And he's probably made a name at the back of, of, a, of a back of a Twitter account where he's just, he's just, he's just being honest. Do you know what I mean? He's just being, he's just being honest and told the truth about about fighters and about saying he's rubbed he's rubbed people up the wrong ways. Just telling the truth because yeah. no one no one no one, one really away and we could have had a, a, a British champion at, at cruiserweight home. He could have had he could have won belts for this town, Doncaster, but as he won he's ended up with a snake belt. He's ended up with oh uh, yeah, all right, cool, then I'll come in bubble this week, I'll do a few interviews for you. He's ended up working for somebody else's YouTube channel if he takes the offer. Hovering about, hoping to get a media job with Sky. Is that what he's come to? Go get a fucking job. If you're not going to be a fighter, go get a fucking job or train fighters. He's not even training that young kid. Started training one fight and that's it, honey. So what that about? Do, do, do you know what, Russ? Yeah, boy. Listen, I'm I'm gl I'm glad he's I'm glad he's retiring, yeah, because I, I think he should retire. Because even though you say he's young and that, he's got a lot of miles on the clock, and he's had a lot of he unnecessary. Listen, walks. mate, he's a Ford Mondeo blue with a red wing, hundred and twenty-five thousand mile on clock. With yeah. a bumps test on a fucking P reg, two liter GL. Was it two liter XL? Whatever. That's what it is. It's a fucking shame. And do you know what? Everything I've been saying for the last few years. It's all been unravelling in front of us. But they kept wheeling him out, didn't they? And wheeling him out. Operation White Rhino. Well, all you people, Coogan Cassius, Eddie Hearn, fucking Bean, and all the rest of you, who've been Operation White Rhino, Rob Tebber, all and your fucking heads in shame. Because at the end of the day, the fucking kid's done his own head in. And you fuckers are responsible. And now you want to palm him off with a fucking camera. I let him go around to shows and get views for you fucking lot. I mean, what the fucking hell? If he lets that happen, fuck, what, what, the, what, what are we doing here? What, what fucking we involved with here? Hey? Eh? Do you know what? Do you know what? To be fair, right? He's, he, when it comes to boxing, he's fairly knowledge, knowledgeable. He could turn out to be a good pundit, Rust. Yeah. Like, whether you like it or not, he could be. He could turn out to be a good pundit. And just go on there and not and and not. Do you know not, what? They'd be frightened, uh, though, though. The they'd be frightened that he'd do a frock and maybe speak the truth because they want people like Macklin and Bellew and Colwell, don't they? They're going to tow the company line and fucking Johnny Horse Cop Nelson. That's what they want, isn't it? You think? Yeah, I think I think uh, well, yeah, but I think fans are getting. I think fans have had enough now. Well, they've had enough they of must virus, be. Haven't 
the year, of course, but it's going to get to a point where they're going to have to do something about it. You know, we listen, we speak about it every time, mate. We speak about it every time we go around, we do go around in circles on this issue, but, you know, the social media, you're just getting even casual fans tweeting in and just getting absolutely mad and about the biasness because we know what we we know what we're seeing fans know what we're seeing so you can't you can't lie but no no uh, so that's basically about it we've done come on we know we've had a good blast today haven't we come on we've done an hour haven't we hour and a half <laughs> I don't know, something like that. I think, we've kept, I think we've kept it real, mate, and kept it honest. We've kept it real, we've kept it honest. All, the, all of you who like the videos, like and subscribe, and share them amongst your pals. If you don't like them and you think that we don't know what we're on with, don't watch. Who cares? So that's about it, really. I've got here, uh, there's... How many videos have we done here? Two, four, six... Mark Tibbs one tonight will be 10th video in one day. Not bad, eh? Yeah, look forward to that. Not bad. I'm not going to put them all out in one go. I might premiere them just to piss a few off. I just start going yeah. mad at me, don't they, for premiering them. How dare I premiere a video on my own channel? Well, they all got to be checked, aren't they, anyway? If somebody else has to look for them now for legal issues now because some of the stuff that were coming out was a bit close to knuckle lately. But nobody else tells it like I do. I'm, it's about the only thing I can brag about this then. So... Best question, there's one more left. So, all right. Uh, that's about it, really. Oh, uh, there's a Mickey Field video coming out later this week. That's a good one. It's in production now with John Fury. It looks like they might be fighting, they might be fighting next summer. So, a little bit of an exclusive there for you. I thought I'd put that in at the end of the video, Matt. So, so let's all go. Is that what they've done? Eh? Is that what they've done? They've built the fight up for a year now and then it's, uh, it's like It's looking like that. Yeah, the, the, mm. I'm told there's contracts all, all going to be doing it next couple of weeks. And, uh, oh, Jesus Christ. And just waiting for confirmation of date and that next summer. So, I don't know. It's all a case of John Fury signing, but everything's all in place. So, it's all looking good. Fury, Theo, Theo, Fury, whatever it is. Get at it. Let's get it on because they don't get along. Well, John's said he'll fight anybody, didn't he? Anybody over 50, he has said it. He's called all these other people out, so why don't fight Mickey? And let him get at it, and that's that. I doubt very much. All that about, let's go for a pint after. Fuck you, yeah, do me a favour. It'd be fake, wouldn't it? <laughs> so let's all get, him get at, at it. Ross. Me? Let him get at it. Let him get at it, like real men. Be real, be real! Well, John, let me just say this to you, John. You just promised that you'll turn up. Promise me, John, turn up. Am I the fucking man or what, man? So, peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. Thanks for coming on, Matt. You're welcome. You've been a breath of fresh air today. Mate. And I hope the weather's a bit better in sunny Essex than it is in rainy Rotherham. All right, my friend. Looking gloomy out there at the minute, but hopefully it changes. So. All right, then. You take care. You too. See you, mate. Bye-bye. Well, uh, that were Matt from Essex, which is Eddie Earn's neighbour. Or neighbour to officers. Next time you see Eddie's car, I might throw a raw egg on bonnet for me. So that's about it. I uh, think I'm going to get these videos uploaded. See, this is the hard part now for me. It's, uh, it's uh, You can do 10 videos, knock them out quick over a full day, and then spend a day or two days getting them out there because I'm not really... I'm not really good at computers. I've only just found out what this button here is. Certa right left. You know in the bottom corner? Yeah, Certa right left. Oh, this one here. Ah, to left. Third one in top bottom left. So, all right. So, have a great day.
ठीक है